Hello. Good morning. I'm about to go on vacation. I'm literally solo vacationing for 48 hours. It's not a long time, but I thought I would just log a little bit. Really what I like to do when I go on a trip by myself is like find good coffee shops, find good bookstores, read a lot of books, do a little hiking. This time I'm bringing Michelle, um, which will be fun. I am like not used to having having a car and being able to go on car vacations. So she's coming with me and yeah, it'll, it'll change things a little bit because I, I, I foresee less book buying, but that's probably good for me. So we're going up uh, Highway 1, uh, hitting up some beaches, hitting up some like fun coastal towns, and it should be a grand old time. I did want to check in with you before I left um, to talk about the books that I'm bringing. This is a problem with um, doing car trips also is like, I, I have no limits on the number of books that I can bring for my 48 hour vacation. Uh, so this is, this is the stack I'm thinking about. I might leave some of these behind, but right now these are like half fiction and half nonfiction. A April was a really great me reading month for me, but in May uh, things have slowed down a little bit, just sort of more to my normal speed. Uh, but I would really love to get like drawn into a very engaging fictional universe again. Um, so I have a couple options for that. Uh, the first one is Wolf in the White Van by John Darnell. Wow, I don't, I don't know if you can see the text in that cover at all. I mean, there, there you go. As, as far as I know, this is sort of a literary mystery. Um, and beyond that, I'm, I really don't know. I think there's, there's something about mazes in it because, you know, the cover. Going to the polar opposite end of books I'm definitely not going to finish this weekend. I did pick up Leviathan Wakes because this is another one that I've heard a lot of really good things about. Um, and uh, yeah, it's supposed to be very plotty and compelling and uh, really draw you in to the, to the world. And then I've had Vicious on my shelf for a long time. But after talking about those two, I feel like I'm not, I don't actually want to, I don't actually want to start this one this weekend. So this is not coming with me. For the nonfiction, I have three books that I've been thinking about. Um, the first one is The Spirit Catches You and You Fall Down. This is a book about a Hmong refugee family that moves to California um, and their eldest daughter, I think, has grand mal seizures. So she uh, has, has a very serious seizure disorder. Um, and it's sort of the intersection of that, that family's culture and sort of the Hmong culture in general with the uh, doctors in the Medicaid system who are, who are you know, every, everybody's trying to do the best that they can for this girl. Um, but there's a lot of miscommunication. And uh, it's, this was one of my formative books. So this, this is one of the nonfiction books that I read in high school that like, I don't know, changed my life, <laughs> I guess, not to be dramatic. Um, but I, I like haven't reread it since then. Anybody who's interested in like medical stuff and sort of like sociology and then also just like very uh, character and narrative driven nonfiction, I highly recommend you read this one. Okay, so this is coming with me. I also am bringing a Michael Chabon, Chabon uh, book or book of essays called Maps and Legends. My friend Alice got this for me and it is like actually the best cover design. Anyway, so so this is like the outer flap, but it comes comes out in parts. So you, you have like like the sea part and the and the forest part and then like the mountain part. I don't I don't know. I just I just love this. This is like the best thing and then this is the hardback cover itself. Anyways, let's actually talk about like what's in the book though. This is this is basically a book of essays about, as you might guess, maps and legends. Um, I actually haven't read any Michael Chabon, Chabon. Oh my god, I don't know how to say that name. A lot of the time with a fiction author, I do sort of like reading some of their nonfiction in order to get a vibe for like what they're interested in and, and you, you know, like Sentence level writing can be really different in between fiction and nonfiction, but you can get sort of an ideal idea of the style and things like that. So I'm going to bring this also. This is, 
as I mentioned, an essay collection, so I'm not really, like, worried about, like, getting through it, you know? I'll, I'll just bring this to browse. And the last one that I was thinking of that I think I'm actually, again, not going to bring. So we've whittled, we've whittled it down. Um, but the last one is Refuge. And this is a book that I would like to read soon. That leaves us with four books in 48 hours. Just kidding. I'm, I'm not going to read all this. You know I'm not going to read all this. But I'm hoping to get a, a chunk of reading done and I'll let you know how it goes. Oh yeah, and then also I'm doing like a four or five hour drive. So the audiobook that I'm listening to right now is The Kingdom of Back, uh, which I really don't hear a lot about except for Noelle at Noelle Seven Pages really loves this book. Um, and I will say I'm like three or four hours into it. So I do know the premise. Basically, it's Mozart's Mozart and his sister, not Nonarel. And it's them sort of growing up. And it's from the point of view of Nonarel. And she is also a musical prodigy, but is sort of overshadowed by her brother, both because he's like a super genius and because of her place in society. And so she sort of makes a wish to not be forgotten and opens the door to this kingdom of back, which is sort of a fairyland uh, that is it's a little unclear in the beginning if they're imagining it into existence or if it exists and then com comes into their imagination. I don't know. Doesn't matter which way it goes. Anyways, so so she meets a a prince who says that uh, he can grant her wish, um, and it's it's been really interesting so far because it's historical fiction, right? Like these are historical, real life characters that you know existed in the world, but there is a strong fantasy element, and I just feel like it's a era and topic that is not frequently it's not common in historical fiction like I feel like in historical fiction it's all like Regency or Victorian or World War II like those those are the big historical fiction genres but this is this is like 18th century I think 18th century so you have the the powdered wigs and everything I'm gonna stop rambling about it but I'm enjoying it a lot I think I am less than halfway through but hopefully with all the driving I'm doing I do hope to finish that one. So these these are the books that I'm reading. I'm off to, where am, where am I heading first? I'm, I'm going to Point Reyes Station, which is a great little co coastal town. I'll see if they uh, let me bring my dog into the bookstore because they also have a great bookstore there. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. I have my uh, fills, which is my treat for doing anything before noon on a weekend. I stand by it. I got my dog. She's ready for an adventure. And I have my jalapeno wine chips. So that's, uh, we're ready for a road trip. All right, well, I'm in Point Race Station. I wish I could have shown you some of the scenery. So it was so nice, but I have made an alarming discovery, which is that I forgot to put that whole stack of books in my car. <laughs> So I'm so glad that I talked about all those books that I'm not going to read this weekend. Anyways, so I'm going to go take Michelle out for a little jaunt because she's sort of wiling. We stopped and we got bread and cheese. Here's the, here's the cheese. Yeah, we're, we're going to walk around and then I'm going to try to see if I can find anything good to read at the, the Point Reyes Station bookstore. So that's where we are. We have a dog back here. Do you want, do you want boop? No. <laughs> she doesn't want boop. Okay. I'll see you guys.
shell. Don't drink the water. Come on, we're leaving, sweetie. <laughs> you got distracted, huh? I'm talking quietly because this Airbnb doesn't feel super, super private, so just try to be low-key, not a weirdo here. Um, but it's very cute, it's like styled, very uh, haunted Victorian, which I'm into. We'll give you a better tour tomorrow morning, I think. But I um, took some clips, so you probably saw what I was up to today, but did a little bit of hiking. A little bit of beach time with Michelle. Michelle was off leash for like five minutes and heard the call of the wild, so that might be the last, the first and last time she's off leash. What else? Oh yeah, I uh, went to Point Reyes Station Bookshop and got Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. I was just talking about how I recently read one of this author's other books and I really did not like it as much as I was supposed to do, but um, Michelle, as you can imagine, is maybe not the best behaved in different store settings. So we get into a new store and she Im immediately starts doing like the swimming legs on the nice hardwood floors, you know, and they're like scrabble, 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 anyways, whatever. So this is just the thing that was on my TBR that was on the table in the front of the bookstore. Um, yeah, but I do have higher hopes for this because um, I think it is a little bit more plotty. I've only read like the first, what is this, like 15 pages? Um, it's sort of about this woman whose neighbor dies at the beginning of the story and they don't necessarily have a good relationship, but she has to come in and like clean up the body, put him to rest type of thing. But I mean, as somebody who like watches crime shows, I'm like, oh, you're messing with the crime scene, but whatever. She's sort of an interesting character because it seems like she's sort of like a um, a mystic astrologer type person. Um, so I'm already I'm already sort of feeling more compelled by the plot, um, and it feels like there might actually be plot in this one rather than flights, which was the other one. Ugh, again, I'm so bad at actually holding these up. When I'm talking about them because I just listen to so many audiobooks and read so many ebooks now. Anyways, so that is this one. It's not the book that I would have chosen for this weekend. I was getting very excited to reread um, The Spirit Catches You, but that, that, that'll be something for another time. I am excited for this though and I have made progress in was my audiobook. I've made progress in The Kingdom of Back. I'm really enjoying that one. I think it's coming together in a way where it's like, yes, this is definitely following the classic fairy tale tropes, and I'm not especially surprised by anything, but it's doing it very well. And like, I feel like there are a couple authors with like the, the sort of storytelling cadence of like fairy tale makers, like when, when I think of Neil Gaiman, that's sort of what I think of. Um, and I think Marie Lu really nails that sort of fairy tale like style in this book. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it's really interesting hearing about a historical period you don't hear about a lot in a lot of fiction. And yeah, normally I'm sort of wary of books that are fictionalized fictionalized lives of famous people, so like the Mozarts being famous real life people, um, but I feel like because I didn't have an image of my, in my own mind of like what the Mozarts were like before coming in, other than like the very basics, I feel like that's not bothering me too much, but you, you might think about that. I, I, I don't know if that's a common thing, but if, if somebody does like the life of Marie Curie or like Mary Shelley or something, but but in like a fictionalized way, it, it bothers me. I don't know why. Um, but anyways, those are sort of my thoughts, and yeah, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.
I've had a good day. Hopefully you've seen clips. We've been just doing some casual hiking and then I went to the, I want to call it the North Star Brewing Company. Oh, Michelle's being so good. This is what she's supposed to do in the car. Yeah, you're so good, sweetie. We just relaxed. Sorry, it's a training moment. I'm in Fort Bragg. There's like a seaside walk here, which is quite long and dog friendly, which I'm realizing is a little bit of a rarity. There's some people standing over there and I feel self-conscious. So I'm gonna pretend I'm not talking to myself. Okay, we're gonna start driving. <laughs> Nothing strange going on here. So anyways, fun cliff walk. I went to the local bookstore and I got two books, which I'm maybe not going to talk about right now because I'm, I'm literally driving. Um, but then I hung out in a brewery for a little while. Michelle had to, had to chill out, which was good for her. And look at this happy dog now, she's just, she's just happy to be in the car. Happy to be rolling. Anyways, so the book that I did read a little bit of in the brewery is called Scratch. It's a, okay, I'm putting it down because I'm turning. Good, good, good. Um, it's a anthology of writers about like the economics of writing, which um, again, it sounds like one of those things that could be really good or really bad. So far, I found it very good. I think that it's uh, very interesting uh, to sort of actually talk about like how we value writing and literature and I, I guess like what selling out means. I basically, I feel like I'm trying to find a book that's going to tell me how to be a moral person in late capitalism and I think the answer is that there's there's no ethical consumerism. That's that's like a tagline that I've heard a lot, but I think it's sort of true. Um, but you know, just sort of reading about different writers. Way can I go? Can I go? I'm going. Okay. Okay. Cool. Anyways, just just reading about how different writers sort of make it work, and it's it's a lot more. It's a lot less about how they make it work. Like, it's not a how-to. It's, like, how writers feel about money and writing, which I think is obviously a lot more interesting. So I've been really liking the anthology so far. I also like the fact, like, the cover um, here has a lot of famous authors' names on it, and there are famous authors in this anthology. But they also... Um, there's also a lot of pieces by authors who are like, you know, ma making a living as writers, but aren't necessarily like household names or whatever. And I think that those are honestly even more interesting because like, I mean, you know, I just read an interview, interview with Cheryl Strayed, who is obviously like a great writer and has interesting things to say. So that interview was really interesting, but I, I think it's even more interesting hearing from the authors who are like, yeah, I got like a $15,000 advance and it didn't change my life but like this is why writing is still important to me and blah 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 anyways so i've been really enjoying that anthology um and yes other than that we've been having a great day i'm heading back to mendocino now i saw a magic shop there yesterday that was not open but now i'm gonna go it should be open now uh and i sort of want to get a book on tarot. <laughs> I feel like that's the north coast area of California is, is uh, there's there's a lot of witchy subcultures around here so I'm, I'm feeling like that's very um, on topic and you, you know would be fun so hopefully I'll get that and then other than that we're just gonna go back to the Airbnb and clean up because like, I'm gross, Michelle's gross. I'm gonna stop filming now because, you know, I'm actually on the highway. We just got back and it's nap time. Definitely for Michelle, maybe for me. Um, I told you I'd show off the room 
but my stuff is all over the place. But this is this is it in general. <laughs> Again, very haunted Victorian mansion, which I'm into. It's not mansion, it's room, but you know, ignore that pile of clothes. Hello. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's complete with, uh, old-timey wallpaper, old-timey wooden bed, old-timey toilet. We love it. Full-length vanity mirror. This is my travel outfit. Let's not judge me too hard. Um, and yeah, what else? There's no water in Mendocino as in most of California, but it's worse here, so that's sad. Anyways, um, so what I'm planning to do right now is just sit in this amazing cozy reading nook and read, and yeah. Cozy reading nook level unlocked. Um, I also realized I forgot to talk about the other book that I got at the bookstore. Again, talking quietly because I don't trust the soundproofing in this house, but this is the other book. It is also an impulse purchase. I hadn't heard of it before, but it's about sort of the the weird ancient creatures that walk among us. Basically, it's about evolution. I just love horseshoe crabs because they are amazing, very weird creatures. At some point, I'll talk about them more, probably. <laughs> I probably won't talk about horseshoe crabs ever again on this channel, but they are very cool. I don't know. I find evolution fascinating. Seems simple on the surface. Very cool once you get into it more. Hopefully this is a good book. I'm excited. Other than that, I did stop by the fun magic store and get myself a fancy tarot deck. The lady there offered to give me a tarot reading and I was thinking about it but decided not to. I don't know, I've never gotten one professionally done. I sort of feel like um, it's definitely one of these things as a scientist where I don't actually believe in tarot. Like, I don't believe that there's like a mystical force telling me things through tarot cards or whatever, but I think it's sort of a fun way to like explore your wants and desires and making meaning when you're like combining your experiences and thoughts and feelings with the artist's representation of different symbols and mythology, I think that's sort of where the strength comes. So I don't think it would be very valuable to get a reading from somebody else, although I guess that's what you're supposed to do. But yeah, that's that's how I justify this as a scientist. I think it's, it's not a very serious thing for me, but it is fun to every once in a while just like lay out some cards and think about like what the symbols say and what the symbols say to me. And like, if that makes me think about any specific experience differently, I, I guess I guess that's why I find them fun sometimes, especially when you're like at a crossroads or whatever. Um, there's also a guy who sold me a knife out of the trunk of his car because I didn't have anything to cut my cheese with. I don't know how to open it though. We'll we'll figure it out or whatever. But I'm gonna read now, so I'll talk to you guys later. The lighting here is not great, but I am going out to dinner, hoping to do Italian. Options are limited when you have a dog. <laughs> Good morning. I'm wearing the same thing as last night, so don't judge, again, stinky traveling me. But um, we're about to hit the road. We're about to head back. It's been really fun, but it's that time, and I want to get home early enough to like do laundry and... Uh, you know, go grocery shopping and stuff like that. So that's what we're doing. I just stopped for my last Mendocino latte. On the way back, I'm gonna be listening to the last bit of The Kingdom of Back. I only have about two hours left of that. Uh, so I, I definitely expect to finish it on the way home. Um, other than that, I read a lot more last night, but I will let you know how, how that was when I get back. Because I just want to, I just want to get started now. So, um, yes. And again, feeling awkward filming in my car because there are people around. I'm just talking on the phone. Don't worry about it. Anyways, I'll talk to you later.
sweet home. You don't need a garden update, but this is this is how it's doing. This is what I have left. Girly is doing what Girly does best. Cool, let's wrap up. Hello. Okay, so I am back home, obviously. Um, I got a little bit distracted this afternoon, but I'm here to wrap up my solo vacation reading vlog. I did end up finishing The Kingdom of Back on the card ride, ride home, which was really wonderful. Um, I was I was a little bit worried that I wasn't actually going to finish the book during this vlog, but I very much enjoyed that story. I feel like that's definitely an underrated book. I know that Marie Lu uh, has other books and other series that are very well regarded on booktube and the book internet in general um so i'm excited to get to those but i think that if you're already a fan of hers you should go back and check out this book or if if you've never read anything by her this would be a great place to start um i mean not having read her other stories novels whatever so i'm not really sure if it's uh a book that's indicative of her other style but i did really enjoy it i felt like i wasn't at any point really shocked by what happened in this story. It did follow very uh, classical fairy tale tropes and sort of like a, a fairy tale storyline. However, um, I really think that the emotional payoff was there in sort of like how the characters' motivations played out and how their relationships manifested um, and sort of like the, you know, the, the emotional revelations that happen at the end of the book, towards the climax, things like that, I think worked really well in this book. And I gave it overall four stars. So highly recommend that. And then I was mentioning that I did do some reading last night. So these these were in the end, the, the three books that I had with me. Not, not these guys. I, I'm thinking this might be my like the rest of April. What month is it? The, the rest of May TBR. Honestly, much too ambitious. Uh, but I, I would really like to prioritize these ones, but that's for next time. For now, let's talk about what I did read. Um, so I sort of ended up almost doing a try a chapter thing. I did read the first 20-ish pages of Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga... It's never going to get easier. Tokarczuk? Tokarczuk? That's how I'm going to say it from now on. Uh, I, I somehow really crapped up this this cover even in like the day that I've owned this. I'm really quite hard on books, unfortunately. They don't stay pristine for very long. But I really like the premise of this book. I haven't gotten too deep into the plot, but the main character is very fascinating to me. So I'm really excited to keep going with this one. I also read the first, I guess not even the, the first uh, essay in the Horseshoe Crab one. So <laughs> yeah, I only read 10 pages of this one. I do think that this is going to be very interesting. It's about um, sort of living fossils. So uh, organisms that are really ancient creatures, but are still alive and among us. Uh, I haven't quite read enough of this to get an idea of the level of detail brought to it or the um, sort of mode of narrative or storytelling in this nonfiction book because you know you can have um, a little bit more informative or a bit, bit more story focused history focused there's a lot of different ways you can go with science nonfiction uh, but I'm very excited to get more into this one and then the book that I made the most progress with is Scratch which is a nonfiction anthology of writers on writing and money um, and I have found this surprisingly interesting I sort of expected it to be a little bit um, redundant and uh, sort of saying the same thing over again, which is like, yeah, writers should probably get paid for their work, which I do agree with. I just like didn't think a whole book would be good for that. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think it would be an interesting enough topic to carry a whole book, despite having bought a book about it. Um, but actually, it's a lot more interesting than I had expected. A lot of the authors approach the topic in very different ways. So there's there's a lot of stories in here that are just sort of like about authors producing their debut work and how that felt and et cetera, et cetera. But um, because they each approach it so differently, it doesn't feel redundant at all. I might change my mind on that by the end of the book, but so far I am over halfway through and um, I am actually really enjoying this. Uh, so that's sort of like an unexpected uh, highlight of this weekend. 
So other than that, I, I had a great weekend away. I think next time I go on a solo trip with Michelle, I'm definitely going to get a place where we have like an enclosed yard and kitchen because it was um, somewhat stressful having to get all of our meals out. M- Michelle is, is a sweetheart, but she's not necessarily the best behaved dog in public. So, you know, she's just excitable. Anyways, um, but we had a really great time. So thank you so much for coming along with me and I'll see you next time. Bye.